At this time, I'm going to call the court to order. Uh, this is a special called meeting to uh, take care of some matters that we uh, have to take care of before the end of the month. Uh, before we begin, I would ask everyone to please turn their cell phones off uh, or silence them. And uh, at this time, I would like to ask uh, Mr. William Spears if he would say the invocation for us, please. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Judge Jones. Uh, here. Commissioner Robertson. Here. Commissioner Tackett. Here. Commissioner Booth. Here. We have a quorum. We are ready to proceed. I'd like to ask Colonel Roy Downey if he would uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Before we uh, move on into the uh, regular business, um, on Wednesday, January 13th, uh, Rose Sad Farley passed away. Rose was a, an English teacher, a court reporter, and for many years served as the clerk of this court. And uh, I've known Rose as long as I can remember and her sister, uh, Lucille Smith, was an icon here in our community. Uh, and Rose would help fill in sometimes uh, for Lucille on her radio show, The Personal Touch, that aired for P WPKE for, I mean, many, many years. Uh, Rose um, was a fine person and uh, was, again, a dedicated employee of this court for 19 years. And I would ask uh, everyone if they would uh, join me in a moment of silence in memory of Rose Farley. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the January 5th, 2021 meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. A motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Robertson. Is there any question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item on the agenda is approval to hire a trail coordinator. And at this time, I would yield to either Commissioner Robertson or Commissioner Tackett for action on this matter. Okay, Judge, I think we're about ready to have somebody to help uh, coordinate this trail system. And the uh, committee uh, on the trail system uh, voted to uh, employee George Atkins as the trail coordinator. Uh, Commissioner Robertson, have there been any terms of uh, discussed between the trail advisory board and Mr. Atkins or that you would uh, suggest to the court in terms of how this will be structured so that we can get uh, Colonel Downey to draft a, uh, an appropriate agreement? This, this will be a uh, uh, $1,000 a month paid to Mr. Atkins, and it goes for six months. We'll see what develops and see how much we can get done. And uh, I guess it's kind of a probation period or whatever. Um, so as I understand it, it will be a six-month contract terminable at will for a thousand a month, uh, 
and he would oversee and coordinate the land acquisition. Is that correct, Mr. Atkins? Okay. And um, Colonel Downey can put this contract together on that and um, in those terms. Now, this money, I assume, would be the money that uh, would be freed up where Mr. Ronnie Hilton left uh, the uh, the uh, yes, Judge contract that we had to pay him a thousand a month, in addition to what uh, Pike TV was doing. Exactly. So we this money is budgeted. There is money there for this uh, to cover that. Is that correct? Yes, Judge. All right. Is there a motion to approve hiring? Uh, Albert A. Atkins, or I guess more commonly known as George, as the uh, trail development coordinator to oversee land acquisition uh, for the, uh, as an independent contractor without benefits uh, at the salary of $1,000 per month, terminable at will for a period of six months. Is there a motion? Motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Booth. Is there any other question or discussion or anything else we need to discuss on this matter? I don't think so, Judge. He's ready to go to work. And I know the court's ready to move forward with it as well. So uh, with that being said, uh, seeing no other question or dis discussion, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes, and I think Colonel Downey could probably have something. Uh, have yes, sir. Because it, it's probably going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday before we can get something drafted. So do you want to just make it for? Okay. All right. Feb start, starting February 1st, we can do it that way. All right. Next item on the agenda is the approval for appointments to the Pike County Trails Advisory Board. And again, this is an advisory board. It does not have the authority to, to act on behalf of the court. But these volunteers have done a great deal of work on this project in terms of uh, helping acquire land and also in terms of mapping and other uh, legwork. Um, I'm going to yield to Commissioner Tackett for action on this matter. Judge, uh, most of these people was, that we're putting back on the committee has been on there or been with us from day one. Uh, and we're just going to repoint them back on there because uh, there's a time limit of, I think, Sharon, was it two? Or like me and Ronnie was on there for four years, uh, two for three years, two for two, or how was that for sure? Justin Prater. And Judge, we really done this because two other people we had on the advisory board, they never came to a meeting one. So okay. we Let's, needed these other two people to fill that vacancy. And, and, that, right. and they came to the meetings out, you know, just showed okay. up. We'll yeah. go ahead. We've got it listed there. If you just want to go ahead and state the motion. Um, I make the motion to uh, reappoint Justin Prater, uh, Leanne Coleman, and Eric McPeak. Hey, would you tell us when their term, uh, the term we have to go through each one of these? Okay. Justin Prater's term will, a point of Justin Prater term will expire 6-1-2022. Leanne Coleman's term will expire 6-1-2021. Uh, Eric McPeak's term will end 6-1-2024. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second? We've second by Commissioner Booth. Any other question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. We have on the agenda the next item is an update on the Trails Advisory Board regarding ATV usage on and UTVs on public highways, roads, and right of ways. Um, I don't see Mr. McPeak here. Ju Judge, we uh, held off with uh, Eric today on that. We just passed by. It. We're going to Frankfurt when? next uh, Thursday. Be next Thursday morning to meet with the transportation secretary on this matter, and we'll have an update on it at the next court meeting. Okay.
Okay, we'll go ahead and move over that, or pass over that. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, acknowledgement of receipt of the report of the audit of the Pike County Clerk for uh, year ended December 31st, 2019. Mr. Stacey, if you had an opportunity to review that audit. I did, Judge. There was no findings. Excellent. And uh, it's very good work by our county clerk, and uh, we appreciate uh, the fact that uh, there was no findings on the audit. So is there a motion to acknowledge uh, receive the report of the audit of the Pike County Clerk for the year ended December 31st, 2019? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Question. Second by Commissioner Booth. Any other question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Just Jones? Yes. Next item on the agenda is approval for an appointment to the Pike County Housing Authority. It would be my recommendation and motion to appoint uh, Mr. Dave Adams, who is a resident of uh, the Douglas Apartments, um, to the Pike County Housing Authority uh, to fill the unexpired term of Christian Markham. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tackett. Any other question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of an appointment to the Pikeville Pike County Airport Board, and it will be my nomination to reappoint Mr. Kendall Wright, uh, who is a local businessman. He's also a uh, licensed helicopter pilot and also owns a, uh, a general aviation aircraft. Uh, he has been a valuable asset, and uh, it would be my recommendation in motion to reappoint Mr. Kendall Wright uh, to the Pikeville Pike County Airport Board for a two-year term that will expire on November 1st, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Robertson. Uh, again, this will have to be conferred on or conferred uh, with by the uh, Pikeville City Commission. We've had an excellent relationship uh, with them uh, and Mayor Carter, especially. So, uh, if there's no other question or discussion, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item. Um, on the agenda is uh, relating to a block grant. We're gonna pass over that until after executive session. We do have some stuff to talk about in regard to litigation, so we need to get into that order of business. Mr. Fannin, awarding of bids, and I think you have some uh, business to take up uh, if you don't care. We have no microphones working. Just speak loudly. They're gonna check them and see. They may be unplugged, I'm not sure. Greg, if you just wanna to go to the podium, I don't like the... Uh... Where's that at? All right, Mr. Finn, you have the floor and you are uh, ready to proceed. Judge, I do have several things I need to go over. <clears throat> uh, the first is we had a bid opening on January 15th for bid number 01-2021 for one 2020 or newer full-size cargo van for the detention center. There was only one bid. It was from Bruce Walters Ford from here in Pikeville. Uh, total delivered cost of $74,620. This is a van that is upfitted for prisoner transport. The van meets all the specifications that were in the bid package. It's my recommendation we award the bid to Bruce Walters Ford for the bid price of $74,620. It's my understanding this is paid for out of the jail's commissary account, not out of the uh, fiscal quarter jail budget. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Is there a motion to award bid number 01-2021 for a 2020 or newer full-size cargo van for the detention center to Bruce Walters Ford uh, with the uh, delivery price? of $74,620, and uh, again, Mr. Fannins represents that this meets all the specifications that were in the bid package. Is there a motion? Motion by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Booth. Any other question or discussion? 
Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. All right, Mr. Fan, please proceed. We had a bid opening today at 2 o'clock uh, on bid number 02 2021 for six 2020 or newer one ton trucks. We had one bid, it was from Bruce Walters Ford. Uh, total deliver cost on truck number one, $44,944. Uh, bid price on truck number two, $44,944. And those were the only two trucks that they bid on out of the six. Okay. Uh, these trucks meet all the specifications that were the bid package. It's my recommendation that we award the bid to Bruce Walters Ford for two trucks at a bid price of $44,944 each. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nitpick you here. Okay. The documents that we have been provided say that they're $44,945 each. I'm sorry, that's what it is, $44,945. All right, not to quibble, but we want, we want to make sure we're, yes, we're sir. on the same page. All right, it's my understanding, and let me explain to the public what these are for. Our fleet of vehicles for the road department that we use to for snow removal, uh, and just general work duty is aging. Uh, Commissioner Robertson and I were at the maintenance garage a couple weeks ago uh, looking into why we had some equipment failures after the, um, actually it's probably closer to a month ago we were over there, uh, right after the, uh, it was a week after Christmas when we had some issues with snow removal because of equipment break, uh, breakdowns. We have trucks that literally are having the frame rust through. We have uh, trucks, I think 2003, 2004 models. And last week, we had a county employee involved in an accident that's probably totaled one of the better trucks that we have on the road at the um, Belfry road lot. So fortunately, we didn't have a big snow this week because we had one truck that was probably rendered a total loss and two other trucks that were broke down. The court has recognized, and we have explained to the public, since I've been judged, since this court's been in office, that we have to make investments in our infrastructure. And that we've done that with our solid waste department. We have them in pretty good shape. Uh, the problem is now we have to turn our attention to the road lots. We have put a bid out for six pickup trucks to, out, to outfit with plows and spreaders. And these trucks do have the snow plow package already on them. Is that correct, Mr. Pan? Yes, sir. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, these trucks are simply unavailable. We've scour the entire country and we've been able to find two trucks to meet our specifications is that correct yes sir so until uh the, the automotive industry can catch up uh you know it's going to be hard to, to to locate other vehicles so we do have before us uh bid number 02-2021 for six 2020 or newer one-ton trucks we received bids on two of those vehicles only from Bruce Walters Ford for the sum of $44,945 each. And uh, it uh, is Mr. Fan's recommendation that we award this bid to Bruce Walters Ford for uh, those two trucks at the price of $44,945 each. Is there a motion to award the bid to Bruce Walters as stated? Motion. We have a tie, is there a motion? Go ahead, Brian. We have a motion by Commissioner Booth, who has now decided he will vote for buying Ford trucks. I had to, I had to get that one in. Adam. That was that was. A, he says if you can't dodge them, you can ram them. <laughs> of course, I, of course, the people who aren't listening to this, we had a little inside joke when I voted against buying Peterbilt trucks. Commissioner Robertson bought me a Peterbilt hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's my favorite hat, by the way. So anyway, uh, so we have a motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Robertson. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson. Yes. Commissioner Tackett. Yes. Commissioner Booth. Yes. Judge Jones. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Fan. We also had a bid opening today on bid number 03 2021 for six salt spreaders and plows. Uh, there were three bid, bids received. 
The first bid was from Baker Truck Equipment of Hurricane, West Virginia, uh, for a bid price of $10,969.20 each. That is for the plow and the spreader. The second bid was from Mid-State Equipment of Buchanan, Virginia. The bid price was $10,625 each for the plow and the spreader. And the third bid was from Owens Truck Equipment of Corbin, Kentucky for a bid price of $10,195 each for the salter and plow. Um, these salt spreaders and plows meet all the specifications that were in the bid package. Uh, it's my recommendation that we award the bid to Owens Truck Equipment for a bid price of $10,195 each. Okay. Now, are these the same makes and models that uh, Mr. Little, our road supervisor and Commissioner Booth, recommended? They are. They're all the Western brand. They're the eight-foot spreaders with the two-cubic yard capacity with the dual electric motors. So by bidding these out, we've saved several thousand dollars, it looks, or a few thousand dollars anyway? Yes, sir. Now, the question is, do we need to go ahead and buy six and award the bid for six, even though we're only going to have two trucks to put them on? It would be my opinion or my recommendation that since we have two trucks right now, we may be out of the salt. We may be out of the snow season before we can locate any more trucks. Um, it'd be my recommendation that we buy two of these, put them in the two trucks that we just awarded the bid on, and uh, still dig and try to find some more trucks. Okay. So, we have, is there a motion to award the bid 03-2021 for six salt spreaders and plows? to Owens Truck Equipment for the price of $10,195 each. And if we go ahead and purchase the two of these now and wait on the other four until we get the uh, other vehicles. Yes. Well, once we've awarded the bid, we won't be able to go back and do that. Not this fiscal year. So um, we need to go ahead. Is there a motion? What, what's the timeline on this, getting these in? Is anybody, either one of these three companies? All three companies told me it'd be about two weeks. All three companies said about two weeks? Yes, sir. So nobody in closer. I mean, what I'm saying, no, no time, no earlier time than two weeks. Well, once we buy these trucks, we have to send them and put spray and bed liners in them. That's going to take a few days, so there's not going to be much of a time lapse. When will the trucks be here? I think the trucks are actually in Pikeville as we speak. Okay. So, uh, again, is there a motion to award bid 03-2021 for six salt spreaders and plows to Owens Truck Equipment for $10,195 each, and that we go ahead and purchase two of those uh, now and wait on the other four until the, we uh, acquire vehicles? No. What's that? Judge, the I, 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 reason I want to say what I want to say is I went over to the garage earlier this week, and when we had that snow, we had a few things tore up. But we had stuff on these lots that were brought into the garage this week that we had parts to fix some of these things with. And they were just sitting on the lots. Just So here, here's the issue. We have put this out for bid. And we have um, received a low bid on it. This fiscal year, um, you cannot, as I understand it, go back and uh, rebid this without having some justification for that. So for the rest of this fiscal year, this bid would stay in place. Is that correct, Frankie? Uh, the court can terminate the contract and then rebid it. At any time, there's always a clause in the contract that says the court can terminate. Um, so, I mean, that that's an option as well. So, the question is, do you want to go ahead and award the comp bid and buy, get two of them now? Because they are the low bidder. You could, you could go ahead and get two now and then rebid the others as we get trucks. Term because, like, like Brian said, you may get up in the summer and the price come down in them. Well, we get you're, some new trucks. you won't. You, yeah, but that's probably going to be after the end of this fiscal year anyway, and that's not going to be a priority as we get into spring because we've got to deal with this issue with our mowers as well. Right. Well, I mean, but you know, if we we've still got really two more months that we could have some snow issues up through the end of March, maybe even into April, 
Um, and if we're going to try to get these on the road, these two trucks, then we need to do that. I, I just know that JJ told me that there's some plows over there we can use. They, I mean, they were just sitting at these road lots. I'm saying we might not. I'm just saying we can't be with our pants down and get a snow though, but there there is some snow blaze over there that we can use. It's not obsolete. Well, and that may be. And what I would recommend we do, since we're getting two new trucks, that you get the two new pieces of equipment to put in them, and so we'll have them as soon as we get there. Then, we, then we can evaluate what's over there. If it's sitting out there on the lot, I suspect. There's a reason it's sitting there. And then if we decide, which is what I'm going to talk to in a minute about trying to locate some used trucks to help fill the gap, then we can look and see what we've already got. But if we're going to buy these two new trucks that are, we're going to be using for years, it would seem to me that we probably should go ahead and make the investment. It wouldn't make sense to put an, an old salt spreader and an old plow on a new truck that we're going to be using for a long time. So we either get the new, well, that's what, buy that's, the two, and then, then, then see how long it takes to get trucks. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, we can make that decision once we get to that point. I don't think you're going to have trucks to put four new other four new spreaders on. You're not going to get them in time before before warm weather gets here. But I. And we might we might can look at like you said, if we can locate us a few good used trucks, we can take the plows. And we might have to just use the plows, and we can order a new salt spreader. I mean, I know Ike needs a new spreader. But, you know, I mean that that's what I'm saying. We can and we could rebid it on just the spreaders alone if that's what we need. But these are electric spreaders as opposed to the gasoline spreaders that we've had a lot of trouble with. And you know, here's what I'm gonna say. We've got a lot of trucks that are, are just giving us trouble. And if we have another big snow, you know, in mid-March when we could have these two vehicles on the road, you know, there's a lot of people got upset over this last snow I agree. because we didn't have equipment to work. And I make a motion to order the two, get the two uh, spreaders and the Okay, plow. here's what you have to do. You have to award bid number 03-20. Let me restate the motion. Is there a motion to award bid 03-2021 for, um, I'm sorry, wrong bid number. Get the wrong page. 03, yes. Is 03-2021 for six salt spreaders and plows to uh, Owens Truck Equipment, which is a Kentucky company, for ten thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars each, and that we only buy two of those now, uh, and reevaluate the others based on our need. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Tackett. I'll make a second on that. Is there any other question or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson. Yes. Commissioner Tackett. Yes. Commissioner Booth. Yes. Judge Jones. Yes. Mr. Little is off today. Is he? I'm sorry, Greg. We got another matter here. I apologize. Um, Greg, I think we've got another matter that needs to be brought to the court's attention. That's uh, that's going to make some of their, their members pretty unhappy, I would think. Uh, would you please go ahead and proceed on this? Yes, sir. Uh, on November 24th of 2020, this court voted to award bids on eight illegal dumps. One of our vendors that was awarded a contract on five of the locations is in default. We stressed in our pre-bid meeting and made it clear in our bid package that these projects had to be completed within 30 days. There is a provision in the contract for the vendor to ask for an extension if needed. This is something that he did not do. Our contract also says the physical court has the option to terminate the contract with due cause at any time. We are now 60 days from the award of the contract and none of the five projects have been completed. There has been progress on three of the sites, but two of them have not been touched. It would be my recommendation that we pull the contract on the two sites that have not been touched and give the vendor seven days to complete the other three. 
These projects have to be completed, inspected, and paperwork finished by the middle of February or we will lose funding. It would also be my recommendation that we award the bid to the second lowest bidder on these two sites. The second lowest bidder is Billiter Construction with a bid price of the Hunts Branch site of $9,500 and a bid of $12,500 on the Gardner Fork site. On the Hunt Branch site, his bid of $9,500 is more than the funding allowed for that project and negotiation would have to occur to get to the funding amount. Uh, this is all grant money with no cost to the county. And the contractor that is in default is uh, Larry Young Construction. All right, so as I understand this, uh, the work had to be completed in 30 days. Contract was awarded when? November 24th. And they were supposed to be done by Christmas Eve and they're not done still? Correct. Any of them been done? No, sir, none of the five. It's, well, it's actually completed once it's been cleaned, inspected, and the paperwork turned in. And, and from what I understand, he said he finished up the cleaning, but it still has to be inspected and the paperwork has to be turned in. Uh, so really they're not completed. So what did he say the reason was? I think maybe Chuck had some conversation with him. I, I have not. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I mean, the re reason I'm asking this, I know in the past, everybody's liked his work because he's got done quicker and he worked cheaper, you know. I, I really don't know what his holdup is, Jason, but uh, at the time me and Greg prepared this, he had none of them ready for even inspection. He does have one ready for inspection now, but the paperwork and all that's not complete. There's no way if we continue to, let, to continue on it that he can possibly complete Gardner Fork. No way. And we'll end up losing money. We'll, uh, if we don't do something, we lose our uh, illegal open dumps grant money. Is that correct? Yeah, we'll have to see. Yes, correct. Um, have we had any discussions with the other uh, bidder, Billiter Construction, um, to see if they could do these? I, I talked to him on the phone yesterday. Uh, I told him kind of where we were at. I told him everything would have to be approved by the court if this happened. But he said, if this happened, um, and I contacted him this evening, he would have a crew ready to start tomorrow morning on Saturday. Okay. If you'll look at this, these bids on, that we did back in uh, November 24th, where it's got Site 5 Adams Branch, there were actually two, was there two areas of dump there, is that correct? That's correct. And there's two also on Clevenger Branch Road, dump one, right? There was only one at Clevenger Branch. Well, here there's two, two different. Now, what that was, what that was, Judge, was that uh, uh, that bid of Larry Young was more than the funding. He bid $8,500, and the funding was only $7,000, and he agreed to do it for $7,000. Also, on uh, site number five, uh, the bid was $7,800, and the funding was only $7,000. He agreed to do it for $7,000. So do we know if Mr. Billiter will do it for that? He said he would do it for his bid price. Well, uh, so we're going to be out of pocket money on that. Is that correct? It's actually not us. It's, 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 hang on a second. If there was only so much money, if there was only $8,500 or $7,000 that was available on the Clevenger branch site and he bid 9,000, that's 2,000 more than we had. No. Two jobs that, that haven't been touched are the Garner Fork site and the Hunts Branch site. Site number seven. Yes. There's three of those, Judge. And that, site number four. That Larry has been working on, and we've, we've extended his time. We give him seven more days to complete. Okay. There's two of them he hasn't touched that we're asking you, the court to uh, to look at here today. That's Hunts Branch and Gardner Fork. Hunts Branch yeah, and Site Gardner. number four and site number seven are the two jobs that he has not started on. Greg, okay. did anybody talk to Larry? Just, I mean, did anybody see what the... What, he, what his problem was? Uh, from what I understand, he's had some illness. He has had some illness. I think health he's issues. had a stent put in in the last health issue. three or four weeks and this and that. He, you know, I, I, I stressed in our pre-bid meeting that these are something that had to be completed within 30 days, that if you didn't have the resources or the manpower or the equipment, you didn't need to be bid on a bunch of them. 
Right. But he did. Well, and like I, I said, I just know in the past since we've been here, everybody has yeah, the, for, for the there's job nothing, that he's done nothing cleaning about them this. up. For them, them. It's just that we have to complete them. We, right. have to make, we have to complete them. And there's no way at the rate he's going that he can complete those two. No, there's no way. You know, Gardner Fork is huge. Pardon? Well, we got uh, – well, they got it done by the middle of February, completed and inspected paperwork in. I'm, I'm just – I'm not telling the court he cannot complete it. That's all I can say is that I know that it cannot be completed if we let it go on. Right. Like I said, I just want to, I just want to know if anybody talked to him to see if, you know, if he's got health issues. I he's, understand he's that. He's working too. on Sookish Creek as we speak. He's almost got it completed. And he's got still Axe Adams branch to complete. And if Gardner Fork and those two that he's not touched, we, we need to get somebody else to do them. Because I, I do not see how he can possibly do it. Because he's been, he's been working on this since November. On the yeah. three, he's, you know, that he's put time in on. I'd say the court needs to take uh, action and do something. Would there be a motion to terminate the contracts with uh, Larry Young on sites uh, number seven and site number four uh, as they were awarded in bid number 37-2020 and award those to the second place uh, bidder, uh, builder construction. Is that correctly stated? Yes. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Booth. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Any other business, Mr. Fan? That'll be all, Judge. Thanks, Thank you. sir. Next item, Mr. Little is not here today. Uh, he is out, and uh, we have the Pike County Road Department completed work orders and progress report. This, again, will be made available to Pike TV on both their Facebook page and on YouTube, as well as their Pike TV broadcast. Is there a motion to approve the Pike County Road Department uh, completed work orders and progress report? We have a motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Tackett. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Uh, uh, regarding the uh, Road Department, Commissioner Booth and I have been contacted about an issue, uh, Mr. Keene, Mr. Downey. This is very important, and we need to get uh, an answer to this. We had some folks who, uh, really nice people, they have a um, family cemetery that is off of a county road. It's on a county road. And that road was adopted into the county road system. However, uh, presently, there's only one residential structure on the road and the cemetery as I understand it Commissioner Booth is past the home is that correct now when this court went in office uh, we were clearly instructed that the fiscal court can only work on roads that are legally adopted into the county road system and or county property now just because they've been adopted into the county road system in and of itself as I understand it does not make it legal there's other steps that have to be taken. They have to be reported to the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, and they have to be reported to the Big Sandy Area Development District. Uh, this road in question, uh, Mr. King, was never reported, or it was re adopted into the road system. It may have had two homes at one time, but now only has one home. The other issue is, um, the other issue is uh, we need to know, and it was never reported to the state, and it's my understanding it's not, probably not reported to the ad district either, but it is not listed with the state. We need to contact the transportation cabinet on Monday. You or Mr. Downey can do this. Um, I would start with the transportation cabinet. If you don't get an answer from them, we need to contact the Department of Local Government. Matt Stevens, general counsel, might be able to help on that, Colonel Downey. We need to know if a road was taken into the road system and is, was either A, improperly taken in, B, 
uh, no longer meets the criteria to be taken in um, or um, a portion of it clearly no longer uh, is, is appropriate to be in the system. Does the county still have an obligation to work on the road until it's removed from the road system? Or do we have to cease any work on the road and remove it from the county road system? Does that make any sense? Mr. Little cannot look, get out to look at it uh, because he's out today. And uh, I'm not sure if he'll be back on Monday is the plan. He's not been able to look at it. But this is not the only road that we've had come up about this. We've had other roads. And I, I want to remind the public that there are a lot that, that the state has given us till Jan July 1st to have all this fixed. Uh, there's a large... Uh, number of disparities between the state's records and the county's records on what was adopted into the road system. And we know that we have roads that show that they were, there was a half mile adopted into the road system, but the county's worked on a mile and a half. Uh, you know, there's all these issues that have come up. Shoddy record keeping, uh, you know, the failure to report these roads to the state, and it really jeopardizes our county road aid money. What we need to know is if a road is improperly adopted in, what happens? What do we do? If it's properly adopted in and then becomes ineligible to be adopted in, what do you do? And then if you have a road that, um, that uh, like th this one's a cemetery road, I mean, can you ever justify, um, you know, and just so the public will understand this, I had, to, I had to advise my own mother-in-law that the road that the county worked to her family cemetery for years illegally uh, is no longer, that, that I couldn't send a road crew out. She asked me, can you send a crew out to work on our cemetery before Memorial Day? And I had to politely tell my own mother-in-law, we can't do that. And that was done for years. And, you, and, and it is illegal. And, uh, you know, we're going to follow the letter of the law as closely as we can and do everything we can to make sure that we do it different than it's been done in the past. So it's not that we don't want to help people, but we are bound to follow the law, and we're going to do that. So we do need to know the answer to that because we've had other roads. There's one in Phelps that came to our attention that was at one time uh, properly taken in, but now there's only one property owner and one home on it. So we need to know if we have to remove that from the road system. So if we can talk to DLG or someone with the transportation cabinet, uh, and then I'd also like to, to know what um, uh, the folks at CACO um, would have to say about that. We could reach out to their legal advisors. Of course, that's an informal opinion. Whatever we need, we need to try to get an email to at least have a document. And if you can get with Mr. Little, he can explain some of the other situations they've had. All right, thank you, sir. This, this road, as you can tell, I mean, I've worked it when I worked there. It's got houses that's fell in on it and stuff, and I also probably at one time it's, you know. I would say it's from probably three tenths. One, yeah, some some of it you can tell was, some of it you can tell that wasn't. It went to the cemetery. So basically, what they've done, they've just took the road from the mouth of the holler and just run it up to the end of the cemetery road and stuff. But there's there's numerous it's cemetery roads, it's county roads, it's paved. All right, thank you, sir. Um, next item is Treasurer's Business, Mr. Stacy. First item is to authorize a fund to fund appropriation transfer for December 2020 uh, to transfer a million dollars from the general fund to the road fund. 
Is there authorization for a fund to fund appropriation transfer for December 2020 to transfer 1 million from the general fund to the road fund? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner uh, Booth. Any other questions or discussion? See no, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Acknowledge receipt of the treasurer's financial statement for the month ending December 31st, 2020. Is there a motion to acknowledge receipt of the treasurer's financial statement for the month ending December 31st, 2020? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Booth. Any other questions or discussion? So you know, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Authorized payment of the expenditure approval list dated January 22nd, 2021, and any other utility and telephone bills received before checks are run. And we'll run checks on Monday. Looks like they're a little bit high this month. The biggest reason there's a bond payment to U.S. Bank uh, for $400,000 due in February, so we have to pay it this month. Is that where the prior court bought trucks and pick it? What was that for? It's for the uh, jail expansion and the, uh, the energy savings project that was done. On this building? Well, there was a bunch of buildings that it was all done on, but this was the major building that the work was done. But that got rolled into one general obligation bond, and that's the bond payment that's due. 397, 428. Right. And, uh, but for that, the bills will be down below what they normally are. Right. All right, is there a uh, motion to approve the expenditure uh, list dated January 22nd, 2021, and approve payment of all other utility and telephone bills before checks are run? Motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tackett. Any other questions or discussion? Please, no, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Acknowledge receipt of the Sheriff and the Clerk's 2550 report for December 2020. Uh, is there a motion to acknowledge receipt of the Sheriff and Clerk's 2550 report for December 2020? Uh, motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tackett. Uh, any other questions or discussions? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. The last thing I have would be to authorize an ACH payment to the Kentucky Board of Veterinary Examiners for three 2021 euthanasia license renewals for the Pike County Animal Shelter. It'll be $50 each, so it'll be a total of $150 plus processing fees. Um, is there a motion to authorize an ACH payment the Kentucky Board of Veterinary Examiner, Examiners for three 2021 euthanasia licenses for the animal shelter at the cost of $50 each. Motion. Motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tack. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. That's all I, I have, Judge. Thank you, sir. I do want uh, to uh, express my appreciation and gratitude to uh, County Treasurer Frankie Stacy. Not long before this court came in, the Pike County Fiscal Court had two consecutive audits that uh, were bad. In those audits, 
um, included things like virtually every account having an incorrect balance, transfers not being recorded, um, failing to timely pay county bills, and uh, it was an embarrassment. And that, those audits led to Pike County losing its credit rating, which will cost our taxpayers uh, money from now on until that credit rating is returned. We have stabilized the finances. We have done everything we can to get the credit rating back. But due to declining population and declining revenue, uh, it may not be possible for us to get that credit rating back. But the good news is this, this week I learned that our audit for um, fiscal year 2020 came back with no adverse findings or recommendations. And to see the transformation in the operation of the Pike County Treasurer's Office uh, and our financial management since uh, Mr. Stacy has taken over has been truly remarkable. And when uh, I came into office, the only thing I said to Mr. Stacy was no bad press. Because if you're not getting bad press, that means you're probably doing everything right. And uh, Frank, you've done an excellent job. It's much appreciated. And that is a huge turnaround over a very short time for uh, the county's finances and um, to have a clean audit with no, uh, no recommendations or suggestions is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. And it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frankie. Now, moving on. We do have um, executive session that we have to discuss. We do have uh, some uh, updates that uh, Mr. Keene and I need to uh, inform the court on with regard to um, the RCC Big Show litigation. Mr. Keene and I had uh, were in a deposition till about nine o'clock last night involving that matter. And we will update the court on that. And we have some other uh, matters that we need to bring up to the court's attention. Uh, Mr. Uh, Downey, would you please instruct the court on the relevant provisions of the Kentucky Open Meeting Law as it relates to entry into executive session for specific personnel matters, um, confidential uh, negotiations over property acquisition or uh, economic development projects, and uh, pending or uh, proposed litigation. Judge, that's going to be KRS 61.810. Paragraph B, I believe, will cover uh, property. Paragraph C is going to be proposed lit and pending litigation. Paragraph F is to uh, discuss personnel matters. Uh, I think that covers what you were wanting to do. All right. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion to enter into executive session? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Booth. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes, we will be in uh, recess for executive session and we'll return to call the chair. This time we'll call the court back to order. Is there a motion to adjourn from executive session? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Booth. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. I don't believe we have any personnel decisions to act on. Yeah. Well, we don't have a list. That, uh, I don't think we can. I think we can do those. We can do those. We can, we can go ahead and start the processing, make it effective on February. That's correct. No, we changed that. Are we ready to do those? Or do we need to do those, Justin? That's what I was. Yeah. Judge, you're right. I could say something. Because <laughs> when I'm not, he lets me know. Now you're learning. This has been a, it's been a learning experience all the way around. I've learned a lot about Peterbilt trucks, garbage, solid waste, grants, all this stuff. So anyway, 
All right. Um, departments. Let me make sure I'm not skipped over anybody. Oh, you need to go back. No, I don't. Now you learn, Jeannie. <laughs> and today, Tuesday? <laughs> Ain't today, Tuesday? <laughs> Pike County Department Supervisors comments. Anything? Thank you all very much. <laughs> Deputy Judge's comments. Anything, sir? Thank you very much. Assistant County Attorney's comments. Colonel Downey, I won't I won't mess with you. you... <laughs> well, it's Friday, I think, for you. It feels like Monday for me. I'll explain that in a minute. So uh all right, thank you, Colonel. Mr. Kane, County Attorney, anything, sir? <laughs> well, you're making me regret that appointment, Mr. Kane. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Do you want to tell a story about the deposition yesterday, or you want me to? It is somewhat entertaining. Um, anyway. Um, Commissioner Tackett, we're going to start with you since you've not picked on me tonight. <laughs> uh, Judge, I ain't got much to say tonight. But, uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think somebody was mentioned there a while ago we had like 5,000 new cases. Of what? COVID? I've got the numbers here. It's pretty. Uh, you know, I just continue to say keep, you know, stay safe and do what's required to stay safe. But uh, other than that, Judge, that's about all I got. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're going to go to Commissioner Booth since he's not picked on me tonight. <laughs> I judge I don't have much tonight, just like Jason said. Just uh, watch where you go and try to be safe. Uh, remember all those in the hospital and remember our country. That's about all I have tonight, Judge. Thank you, sir. Um, I do have the updated numbers for the COVID. I'm going to take uh, just a short time on this. Um, it is alarming. Uh, I, again, I want to thank the employees of the Pike County Health Department and all of our frontline workers, our first responders, and our healthcare professionals uh, who have done so much to keep us safe. We've had a lot of employees here in the fiscal court contract COVID. We have made it to October without having a single employee contract the virus. Uh, to this point, um, we have 983 active cases in Pike County, 39 deceased. There are additional cases in the review committee. Um, the other uh, numbers are 4,306, 4,306 total cases, 339 over the previous seven days with a 48.4 average per day. Uh, and a, uh, they take this number and they, they do it to where they can compare it to the rest of the state. That's uh, an 81.7 daily average per 100,000 population. We have 65 people hospitalized with COVID in Pike County. 33 are Pike County residents. 23 are in ICU. 15 of the 23 are on ventilators. The ICU capacity is at 92%. The ventilator capacity is at 44%. There are a lot of sick people. And we do have one county employee, I think, that is still in the hospital. And we want to wish him, I won't mention names, but we want, we want to uh, express our concern and, and uh, continue to uh, uh, pray for his full recovery. It's a very tough time. It's been a tough year. We are getting vaccines out, but it's a slow process. Apparently, there's not been really a national strategy on how to do this. 
uh, there was an article I read yesterday that if this, at this rate of vaccination, we're going to be somewhere toward the, the uh, fall of 2022 before we have enough people vaccinated to really stop the virus. If they can increase testing to a million, vac or, I'm sorry, vaccinations to a million a day, uh, they can get it done by the spring of 2022. If they can increase it to about 1.3, 1.4 million vaccinations a day, they may be able uh, to get it done uh, by the end of this year. So until we can get a sufficient number of people vaccinated, this virus is going to continue to spread. We had a record number of deaths yesterday in Kentucky, and I think I've not seen the numbers for today. Commissioner Tackett said over 5,000 cases in Kentucky today. That is alarming. The growth in the case uh, uh, numbers um, should scare anyone. And I would hope that the people out there have seen enough uh, to realize now this isn't a hoax. It didn't go away after the election. And it's not going to go away anytime soon. And we need to be careful. We need to wear a mask. And we need to socially distance. Uh, the other issue I want to bring up is yesterday, uh, Mr. Keene and I spent uh, more than eight hours in a deposition of one of the individuals in the RCC Big Show litigation. Uh, we have updated the fiscal court on that in executive session, and uh, we are continuing to pursue the two principals that received the funds from the Pike County Fiscal Court and defaulted on that note. And as long as I'm county judge, we're going to take every step we can. And Mr. Keene, as county attorney, will take every step possible to make sure that we recover this money uh, or hold these individuals accountable uh, for uh, the, the monies that were spent. So uh, with that being said, uh, it was a long night. Mr. Keene, I want to thank you. Uh, we left the deposition last night at about... Uh, 915, 920, 930, somewhere in that time period. And, uh, but uh, again, we're going to keep the public updated on this and uh, we'll have some additional depositions that will be taken on that. Mr. Keene is doing this in his capacity as county attorney. I am uh, also assisting him. Of course, there's no cost to the county for that. And uh, we're trying to save every penny we can for the taxpayers. Uh, this is a complicated case. It is in federal court. We are not uh, retaining outside counsel. Mr. Keene and I have both have considerable experience in federal court, and we're going to pursue this uh, until, uh, until we get uh, some measure of recovery. So we wanted to bring that up to the public's attention because that still is pending, and uh, we will continue to keep the public updated as we move forward. So with that being said, I'd like to ask Commissioner Brian Booth if he would say the benediction if there's no other business to come before the fiscal court. You're not going to let me talk. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> Commissioner Robertson. <laughs> I was trying. I've just got uh, a thing to say. Uh, Mr. Bob Ford called me last week, and he was wanting some uh, uh, no littering signs put up from the railroad tracks up into uh, Broadbottom. They've got a bad problem with litter down there throwing out on the banks and they're trying to keep that community pretty clean down there. So just want to let him know that we're going to try to take care of that in the next week or so, Reggie. Right. Okay. And just to everybody, please wear your mask and be safe and just take this real serious because I think a lot of people's not. Ronnie, in, in all seriousness, I was I skipped over you as a joke, but I'm so tired I forgot. He, uh, he so got out he, of the hospital last night, Judd. Who's that? Did he? Yes, okay. I spoke I with did. him last night. He got out of the I didn't. I was not aware he was out of the hospital. But, uh, again, we have county employees been pretty sick. And uh, just continue to pray for all those people who have been impacted. Uh, it's taken a, a, a significant uh, toll. And I'm hopeful that Congress will act again with uh, additional uh, stimulus to try to help uh, keep the economy out of a recession and, and get people back to work. So thank you all very much. Commissioner Booth, would you please say the uh, benediction for us? Dear Lord, as we come before you this evening, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, watch over us all as we travel to our homes, dear Heavenly Father. 
Lord, watch over those sick, dear Heavenly Father, and watch over our country and our county, dear Heavenly Father, and go with us to this another point in time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tackett. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. We are adjourned. <laughs>